Welcome, everybody. Spring training continues here in the Cactus League. I'm Gary Thorne. We're in Arizona. John Brock and Steve Phillips for 2K Sports. When he is on, the ground balls are many. Fausto Carmona will make the start. Freddy Garcia, the starter. Steve will be watching how he approaches this Cleveland lineup. Well, the veteran Freddy Garcia has had to reinvent himself as time has gone on. Injuries have hampered the fastball. He now has to work a sequence of pitches and use his secondary stuff to set up his fastball. Lineup for the Indians. We'll take a look, courtesy of Pepsi. So who are you looking at, John? Well, a long tradition of great shortstop coming out of Venezuela. And as Drupal Cabrera is carrying that flag proudly, he has the best hands in baseball. And I tell you what, if you're looking for showmanship, he can really put it on at that position. Plus, he can swing the bat, so he's more valuable than most shortstops in baseball. And Grady Sizemore up. He'll be starting us off here. The first pitch coming right up. Number 24, Grady Sizemore. Garcia gets set and delivers. Ugly pitch. Catcher able to somehow scoop that out. Now the 1 0 pitch. And Sizemore swing and a miss. That evens the count up. Uh, coming off of a game where he swung the bat extremely well. A single, double, and triple just short of the cycle. Only lacking the home run. And I'll tell you what, he's locked in right now. Just off the inside part of the plate. Two and one. The lifetime average, 345 off Freddie Garcia. The 2-1 pitch. Swing and a line drive. In time for the up. Now a quick look for this game with the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. What do you like out there, Steve? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And Cabrera settles in. Well, the Cleveland Indians proved to be one of the division rivals that the Chicago White Sox could at least handle in 2009. Too low on that one for a ball, 1-0. Interesting that the uh, White Sox lost the series against Cleveland at home, but they went 6-3 and three in Cleveland. Yeah, that is kind of amazing, but that just shows you just how... Swung on, line softly, left side. And that'll be Cleveland's first hit of the ball game. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ranked. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top 10 in team batting average with runners in scoring position getting a lot of clutch base hits and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. Runner at first with one down. Right. Swing and a miss on the ball probably out of the zone. I fooled him right there that two seam fastball has to be down in the zone to be effective but it looked like he was looking for a different pitch. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. I tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steven, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate, and he took advantage of it. Chew into the batter's box. If the Cleveland Indians are going to turn around their fortunes in 2010, they're going to build it around Sinshu Chu, a guy that hits in the middle of that lineup. He has to take the pressure off the other guys who have struggled for the Cleveland Indians. That runs a strike to 0 and 2. Freddie Garcia. Since Su Chu, if there's one thing probably you'd like to pick up on a bit, it's cut the strikeouts down. He's, he's too good a contact hitter to strike out 150 or more times. Well, absolutely correct. If you're going to hit only 20 home runs, you know, if you're going to hit 40 or 50 home runs, you can live with the strikeouts. But if you're going to only hit 20 home runs, put the ball in play more, get that batting average up higher, and score more runs to help your team. Back up the middle. That keeps those runners at first and second. What a tremendous catch right there. I mean, what a great effort getting to that ball, making that catch. And it's Johnny Peralta in the box now. Two men on and two men out. Shot back to first. And it's through. Credit Peralta, base hit. And Cabrera will score. Now batting for the 
We have to take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got the first base. That's how you get in safely to second. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. Getting out in front. Any time of the ball game, you want to do that. Now you try and build on it. Well, they staked out an early lead in this one, just where they want to be. Well, you know, when you hit like this in the first inning, you start to anticipate maybe uh, back up the middle. Early pressure being put on, a run over in the first. The Tribe lead it one to nothing. And we've got Fausto Carmona out on the mound. He'll get the start for Cleveland. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Fausto Carmona has some of the best movement of any pitcher in the major league. The problem is he can't command it. He has to focus on throwing everything down the middle of the plate and let his natural movement take it to the corners. If he starts it at the corner, he's going to fall behind the count and get in trouble. The grounder to Peralta. And Pierre is retired. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, it's so rare for a guy that has some power in his bat like Alexi Ramirez has, but he doesn't strike out a lot. That shows he has great plate discipline, and he also, when he gets a chance, he puts the ball in play. So look for some excitement and some action every time he comes to bat today. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Looking to build offensively off his last game where he had a couple of RBIs and trying to carry that into this one as well. The pitch from Carmona. Takes a swing, but he's too late on that one. Strike one. Now the 2009 Cleveland Indians were just a losing team. They had a losing record at home and an even worse record on the road. And by the end of the season, they ended up tied for last in the AL Central Division. There's a swing and a miss, but he's headed for first. And out, the catcher makes the play. Oh, that's a great play, Gary. Pitch in the dirt, gets away from the catcher, does a great job retrieving the ball and gunning him out at first. If you're a pitcher, you never want those strikeouts not to get recorded. Good play to be able to get the out at first base. And Paul Canerco to bat. When we talk about the Indians on the road, what you uh, really all you need to look at are the 51 losses that they had. A line drive towards the hole. And there's Peralta. He pulls it in, third out. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest you around. The Indians still out in front. And we've got a Busher at the plate. Designated hitter, number 36, Brian Busher. Fastball swung out and missed 0 and 1. Now coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out. So got to be seeing the ball pretty well. Swings hits this one in the air down the right field line. It's a fair ball headed into the corner for extra bases. He's going to try for three. Coming to bat. Well, Cleveland I was already Indians. to mark this down on the card as a double and put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. And it's Crow at the plate. Runner in scoring position at third. No one out. Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. Outstanding mechanics right there. He gets all of his body into the pitch. Great velocity on it. A strike away. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. One one pitch is a circle change that hits the target one and two. Here's the delivery 
Big swing, misses on the changeup, struck him out, went away. Now KK shows 85 miles per hour in the velocity and not much movement at all. Well, you know, you don't have to get every strikeout with heat, and he showed you how you can do it with those last two pitches. Boy, that's a great piece of pitching with a changeup right there on that sequence. He starts him off with a strike on the inside part of the plate. Well, that's a hittable pitch right there, Gary. A fastball in the inner part of the plate. But if you're looking out over the plate, sometimes it freezes you. Doesn't get the call on the slider. One on one. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. Here comes the runner for the plate. And there's the second out of double play. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. Indians won, the White Sox nothing. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton, one of the best batting averages in the league. The pitch from Carmona. Swung on, and it's hit. This one towards Sizemore, though Quinton is retired. One down. Number well, a look here at last year in the American League Jordan. and where the Indians Back ranked out. compared to everybody else. Seventh in batting average, seventh in hits, and they were in the top ten in runs. An offense that was relentless, that ability to continue to put the pressure on the opposition and take pressure off their own pitching staff. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. It is foul. Well hit towards the middle. Balbuena. That's two gone. The Chicago White Sox. Center fielder. Number 51. So Alex Rios to try and keep it going. His lifetime batting average not good. 226 against the Indians. That's hit foul by Rios. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. That's going to one hop off the wall. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Well, you know, he's feeling pretty good about himself right now. He's generating the first opportunity here with two outs to put up a run on this inning following his double. It's going to be Przinski. Well, if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung about well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. Paramount's pitch swung on and missed. 0-1. Well, he just couldn't wait for that changeup to get in the strike zone. You can't try to chase it. You have to let it come to you. Here's a swing and a line drive. Throws on to first side is retired. Well, that was a quick inning right there. Seven pitches. The White Sox still hoping to put something up. Grady Sizemore Blake. Center fielder, number 24, Grady Sizemore. And he starts Sizemore out. Hit in the air to left center. And the play made by Pierre. One away. And Cabrera settles in. And the most consistent player in 2009 for the Cleveland innings was definitely Asdrubal Cabrera. A guy that they switched from second base over to his natural position shortstop. And he had a breakout year for the Cleveland Indians. Cabrera will foul that one away. For Cabrera, a sparkling 308 batting average in 09, an integral part of that team's batting order. Well, he certainly was, and it, it, you look at him playing shortstop, and he definitely reminds you of another former Indian shortstop and fellow Venezuelan, Omar Vizquel. And that's a strike, as Drupal Cabrera is going to have to take a defensive stance here. The hitter now needs to protect the plate. Think about going right back up the middle. 
Garcia gets set and delivers. You're out. Slider swung out and missed. Two down. I'll tell you, that kind, of, that kind of breaking ball in the low 80s is awfully tough to hit. Fantastic piece of pitching to get that out, John. Well, that's the part of pitching you love. He's looking for a fastball. He's expecting a fastball. And then just drop one right off the table. What a pitch. It's going to be Laporta now. 250 is average last season against the White Sox. Drilled towards the hole. Played by Canerco. And the tag is applied. Side retired. But Freddy Garcia gets him three up, three down. He's held the offense to just one run through three innings. And it'll be the White Sox. Leadoff batter will get a shot at it later on in this inning. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzy Guillen. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. I don't know if you had a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one, swung the bat well. Swing and lined up the middle, and that'll put Tian on first. That'll bring up Mark Kotze. Well, that's the start they wanted right there. You get the first guy on with the inning. No outs. Big things could happen now. No one out and a runner on first. There's a bullet towards third. Fantastic chance here. You want your hitters to go with the pitch. Don't try to force things. The ball's away. He drives it away. Use the whole part of that plate and the whole part of that bat. And he did. Kids, you want to learn how to hit? That's how you do it. Swing and a miss. Pierre, strike one. Over his career, a 265 hitter off the Indians. And the 0 1 by Carmona. Hit up the middle. And it's through. Credit Pierre, a single. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence. Giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And he's got a shot here to give his club. Swung on and ripped towards second. That one's going to fall in. And Tian gets driven home. This one rolls through to the wall. He comes in to score, and they're going to get the lead. And Pierre also scores. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Cleared the bases with that swing. Three RBIs. Here's the impact on our Pepsi WPA graph. They're just teeing off right now. Four straight hits, and clearly this offense is locked in. With a run 90 away, here is Paul Canerco. And with the lead, this lineup looks as though they're ready to do some more damage. Uh, still a ways to go, but pitching's going to catch up here. Well, you have to credit this lineup, Gary. Some quality at bats right now and taking advantage of the opportunities, and now they have a lead. The pitch from Carmona. Smash towards the middle. And in there, the White Sox will score. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Carlos Quinton. Okay, the defense needs to stop right now. They need to put up an out here. This offense just has been relentless this inning. First pitch to Quinton. Couldn't get around in time. 0-1. Now he's an offensive machine last time out, a hitting clinic with four base hits in his last game. And the 0-1 by Carmona. A swing line to left center. And another hit. Oh, my, this clinic's just beginning. Well, they need a big out right here, Jeremy. They're giving up some runs in this inning. They need to get outs right now just, again, to show that they can get it. No one out yet. Runners at first and second. The first pitch, a liner headed for the hole, and Peralta is able to get to that one. And the runners will have to hold at first and second. Here's Alex Rios now, RBI chance. 
the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got traded to the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Things just didn't get better in either place. Carmona's pitch swung on and missed 0 and 1. For uh, Rios, just a 247 batting average last year. Nobody expected. Line towards second. From his knees, got him. What a throw. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay. So they will not get the double play. And without that great diving play, there would have been no outs on this shot. Now he sucks it up like a vacuum cleaner, recovers quickly, and then the presence of mind to get the out at second base. Kennard will be the new pitcher. He's been chosen to take over out there. Well, there is such a thing as manager's prerogative, but he's going to have to answer some questions about this after the game because there's no obvious reason why he has to come out. Hit sharply towards the hole, and there's Peralta. He pulls it in, third out. They pound out six hits in the inning and push across four runs as well. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. And leading it off, Shinsu Chu. 0 for 1 thus far. 17, Shinsu Chu. And he starts Chu out. And Garcia gets him on the swinging first strike. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter, swung late. That's on the outside corner, nothing in two. Well, the hitter's got to regret that one. He missed his pitch right down the heart of the plate. Four-seam fastball. That hurts. And he catches Sin Su Chu looking. Strike three. He'll head back to the dugout. Now, K Cam's going to show us a good look of this slider. Now, you like doing this as a pitcher. When you when you can place it down and in like that, boy, that is tough to hit. Well, it came down and in on him a bit. Just caught the enough of the strike zone to get the call from the umpire. Nobody on base, one away. Here's the pitch to Peralta. Shot towards the hole, and it's through. Credit Peralta, base hit. He throws. Well, he stayed behind the ball right there real well. Got himself that one-out base hit. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. Well, going to try to make some contact in this ball game today because he swung and missed a little bit too much, striking out twice in his last game. And the first pitch. And Garcia gets him on the swinging first strike. The pitch. Good hard slider that time. He's in control in the count now. 0 and 2. Swing and a rocket towards short. And it's caught by Ramirez. And he'll go back to first. Designated hitter number and we've got a busher at the plate. Busher. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch on the way. Strike Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0 and 1. The pitcher really rearing back and throwing. He's got everything working now, commanding the strike zone with that fastball. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. The opportunity for offense is right now. Fielder number 27, Trevor Rose. Uh, 0 1 mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate and he pays for it. Two down. Runners at first and second. Here's the first pitch. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. Oh. Well, that pitch right there just seemed to get away from the pitcher, took off on him. Looked like he tried to overthrow that a little bit. Here's Garcia with the 1-0 pitch. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throw is not in time, and that will be an infield single. Well, the pitcher makes a great pitch right here. Had him way out in front of this ball, but he gets just enough a piece of it to put it in play, and with that speed, he just beats it out. Garcia gets set and delivers. Ball. Oh. 
0-1 pitch, circle change, swung out and missed, 1-1. One one. Good looking fastball, called the ball though, 2-1. He watches the fastball go by. Now it's two and two. The slider swung out and missed. Struck him out. Side gone. And to the dugout he goes. Freddie Garcia. And it'll be the White Sox. We'll be looking to the leadoff batter later on in this inning. Another AB. And Mark Tiana. Number 24, Mark Tien. First one to Tien. Here's the pitch. This one's grounded near third. Foul. On the way. That swung on and a liner here. And well, Blaina makes the play. Katze into the batter's box. Well, if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. One out, nobody on. And here's the first one. Out in front on that one, strike one. Pretty good location right there. That slider down in the strike zone. And you know what? After you saw that swing, you might want to come back with another. He's not seeing that one well. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. And he's in at second with the double. One up. Number six, Juan Pierre. Only one out here in the inning, so a good opportunity here if they can string a couple hits together to make this a very productive inning. And on second, one away. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And he gets it through. That's his second hit in the ballgame. That will bring up the big bat in a big moment, Alexei Ramirez. The slider's a little bit easier to hit when that break is coming to you as a hitter as opposed to moving away from you. You just have to make sure you clear your hands. He does a good job right there to get a base hit. Came up with a bases loaded triple in his last plate appearance. Well, he's already produced three runs in this game. He's clearly swinging the hot bat. You know they're going to be very careful with him here. And Ramirez oh. settles in. First pitch. They throw wide with the first one. The tag, and they got him. At the belt, the 1-0. Now swinging and a shot toward second. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. So they pick up a couple of hits in the inning, but do not score. White Sox, four. Cleveland, one. I'm so glad you could join us. A chilly day of baseball. Most of you, I'm sure, comfortable where you are while the players here deal with the weather. It's Grady Sizemore in the box now. And he starts Sizemore out. Strike Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. What an outstanding pitch. Changing speeds, hitting your spots. Throw that change up away. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. That runs a strike to 0-2. Freddie Garcia. And Grady Sizemore strikes out. Couldn't make contact. You got a second now to see the four-seam fastball in K-Camp. Good job of keeping and guessing by changing speeds out there. And boy, John, you saw the effect of that. That swing, he wasn't even in the same time zone. But going from off speed to a heater like that is never easy. And even guys that make the big bucks have a hard time adjusting. And Cabrera settles in. He's off in a walk, top five in the league. Strike Called one. strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. Look, Gary, you're right. I mean, I mean, as a walks leader, 
Uh, I mean, he has such patience at the plate, and that's the kind of patience that really rubs off on teammates. Line drive, and it's caught by Ramirez. It's going to be Laporta now. Base is empty and two down. Garcia gets set and delivers. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. Well hit towards the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here in this half inning. And it'll be the White Sox. Here's Manny Acta, the manager. You can kind of tell he's figuring out just what he's going to have to do here to try and overcome that three-run deficit. And it's Paul Canerco now. You saw their last game. You saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. And he starts Canerco out. Swing and a line drive. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Well, that's the start this team needed. Get that first guy in the inning up, get him on base, and let's see if they can bring him around to score. A runner on first, no out. Here's the pitch. Should have let that one go by. Hits the dirt, but it's a strike on a swing. Lined right at the second baseman. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Opposite field hitting. It is a classic piece of baseball. Especially on that inside pitch. It keeps the defense off guard when you can muscle the inside pitch to right field. And Beckham's in the box. Hit sharply towards the hole. That's one. Decides not to try for the double play. Hangs on to it. Well, they're down already early in this game. They can't afford a big inning against them. That's a big first out. Now let's see what else you can do. And he starts Rios up towards the middle. And that keeps the runners at first and second. And a double play. They got a both. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. White Sox four, Cleveland one. And leading it off, Shinsu Chu. 0 for 2 thus far. Shinsu Chu. And he starts Chu out. And Garcia gets him on the swinging first strike. Boy, he's got great movement on that two seamer. It's one of the best around. He delivers. Slider locked him up. He's behind 0 2. Got the bat on that one. And Pierre's there. That one's taken care of. Now the hitter just out in front of this one, causing him to lift the ball to the outfield. The left fielder makes an easy play. Base is empty, one out. Here's the pitch to Peralta. Ball one. Fastball runs inside, 1-0. Oh. Oh. 1-0 oh on the way. He swings, hits a ball to right field. And two down. And it'll be Valbuena standing in the hip. Lined out last time up. Two out, space is empty. First pitch, here it comes. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1.
Swings and grounds this one foul wide a third. Check swing strike three called side retired. No runs no hits nobody crossed the plate in this half inning and nobody left on base. The White Sox still ahead. Look at Ozzy, Ozzy Gant. He has to be pleased with his team's performance so far today. Leading it off, AJ Brzezinski. Here's the pitch. A line drive towards short. And so Brzezinski retired. And Mark Tiana, Mark one for two in the ball game. Base is empty with one away. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0 and 1. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Hit up the middle. And that'll put Tian on first. That'll bring up Mark Potse. Well, that's all you can ask your hitter to do. Find a way to get on base, and he does with one out. That base hit right there. A little bit of momentum. Let's see if they can move him around and possibly score a run. Here's the pitch. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0-1. Five hits, 12 at bats last year against the Indians. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Over to second for one. And there's two, a double play. Quick half inning there. It's over five pitches. And we'll see the Indians next. And we've got the Busher at the plate. He'll start things off here in the seventh. Ryan Busher. Garcia gets set and delivers. He makes contact, line drive. And that'll retire Busher. And it's 26. Crow at the plate. Had a base hit his last time up. One out, nobody on. First pitch. And there's a swing and a miss behind 0 and 1. Offensively now they've got to start to work the count. They've got to try to get base runners on and get things going here. I mean you've got one out here in the seventh inning. It's not too late to try to make up some of this deficit. Swing and a line at a right center. And it gets down. That's hit number two making good contact. Well this is a guy that usually struggles with pitches in and around the knees but he was able to just drop the bat head on it got a good piece of wood on it a quality big league at bat. And the first pitch called strike Garcia got that one in it's on one. Pitch on the way swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin out number two. I just got pulled a little bit at the plate. Got underneath it. Lofts just a routine fly to the right field. Here is Grady Sizemore. But Gary, when you're trailing, you don't want to run into outs, but they have good speed now at first base. May not be a bad idea to try to... A smash towards the hole, and that's going to do it in this half inning. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand it. The White Sox still on top. It'll be the leadoff man trying to get things going here. We're looking there at Manny Active. 
And uh, tough decisions, six. maybe or maybe One. not. This bench Here. needs some inspiration. He'll try to give it to him. And we got Pierre batting. The first pitch. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Well, he threw in that slider right there. Got him to swing a little bit early. Got to be a little more patient with that pitch. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. Talk about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. So Alexei Ramirez is batting. A great opportunity for him and the Sox. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Line drive. And the play made by Laporta. Now up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Here First is Paul Conerco. Number 14. Pressure here Paul on the mound. Conerco. One on, one out. Here's the delivery. Here's a swing and a ball hit high into the air. Deep right field. Way back there. Over the wall. A two-run home run. The lead is five thanks to that two run shot. Uh, Gary, sometimes when a hitter goes up there and looks for his pitch and gets it, he can drive it out of the park. You know what we're talking about, Steve, is going to the plate with an idea. He had one and it worked. Now, sometimes even a bad plan is better than no plan at all. White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos. One out, base is empty. First pitch to Quinton. Hit hard to second. Now it's two away. And Beckham's in the box. Jordan Beckham. Base is empty with two outs. Now swinging a shot toward second. Throws to first side is retired. They add a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. White Sox, they've got a commanding five-run lead. As Drubal Cabrera leading it off. We'll try it again here, just one for three thus far. Cabrera. And he starts Cabrera out. Good rip on that one, but he missed it on one. Uh, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. Good patience as has Drubal Cabrera lets that one go by for a ball, evening the count. Well, he tried that four-seam fastball up in the zone to get him the chase. Tough pitch to lay off of. Good job by the hitter. Towards center field. And in there, second hit for him in the ball game in his fourth plate appearance. That'll bring Matt Laporta to the plate. Well, a nice piece of hit right there. You get on base to start the inning with no outs. And you know, all it does is you want to just keep the line moving if you're the guys behind him. Now the first pitch. Just off the outside, and it's 1-0. Oh. Ready with a 1-0. Oh. Swung on, line softly towards right center. And it's through. That's a base hit. That's a great situation for some offense. Right fielder. Well, this is great patience at the plate. He let the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball, and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way, as he just did. Ball 
Fastball misses away. One and zero. Oh. The one zero -oh pitch. Well hit towards the middle. It's picked up. One. Over to first, he is safe. Almost a double play, not quite enough time. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. Runners at first and third, one away. Here's the pitch to Peralta. Called strike, Garcia got that one in, it's 0-1. Look, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth inning and not leave it all to the ninth. And it's 0-2, Johnny Peralta. He'll be swinging anything close. The pitcher's got him right where he wants him now. Up ahead, 0-2. That one swung on its line. Back I'm able to pull that one in. And that will hold the runners at the corners. Second base, one. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. Struck out swinging his last time up. Runners at first stand third with two away. And here's the first one. Oh, that's trouble. That's got to be tracked down. At the belt, the 1 0. Right and one. that's waved out and missed. 1 and 1. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen. It, this one line towards the hole. And that one to fall in, and the run will score. Cleveland, Cleveland continuing to deliver big hitter, offense. Number 36, Brian Busher. The best hitters in the game use the whole field. You have to be able to go the other way. Even when the pitch is over the heart of the plate, that's what he does right there. The guys have prolonged their career, not with power, but with base hits that are hit that way. First pitch to him. It's fouled off. Here's the pitch. Oh, and he lays off the fastball. Good pitch, one and one. Well, the starting pitcher right now is over 80 pitches, and this is a time when the manager and the pitching coach have to keep an eye and see if his velocity is dropping. If it is, you might want to think about getting him out. Ground ball up the middle. Beckham throws to second. That'll be a force out and the third out. They pick up one on three hits, strand a man. The Indians are not content. They are not sitting back despite trailing. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. Trying to get here, just one for three thus far. He deals. Swung on and ripped towards second. And the throw in time for the up. Number 12. It's going to be Przinsky. Base is empty with one away. First pitch, here it comes. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. And it's back over his head. Should be good for extra bases. And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Well, that's hit number 15 in them for that one. And boy, you get 15 hits in the game. The manager can just sit back and relax and watch his team work. And Mark T into bat. Two for three thus far. Swing and a hot shot. And it gets down a three for four game. Good hitting job. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. And here's Mark Kotze. He got another shot after hitting into that double play last time up. He swings and nails a liner. 
out number two. With that, they keep the runners at first and third. And we've got Chris Perez out on the mound. He'll be the reliever for the Indians. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, pitcher that's trying to find his way in the big leagues, Chris Perez, he has yet to establish himself as either. A swing line to left center. That one in the alley. This could be two or more. And Pierzynski comes in. Tien's on his way home. And he's in as well. He'll pull into third. That's a two RBI three bagger. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. Now well, this offense is having one of those days. Wow, are they putting some numbers up. Now, well, Gary, as, as you can see, this offense just keeps on rolling, keeps on producing. Why don't you keep on rolling, Gary? And in this game, there's no such thing as piling on. You want to carry over. If you're hot now, keep it going. 0-1 oh, offering from Perez. That one's grabbed. Side retired. They pick up two, three hits. Strand a man. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Leadoff batter will get a shot at it later on in this inning. And for those of you catching up with us, hi, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Crook and Steve Phillips bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And it's Crow at the plate. He'll start us out here in the last inning of regulation. And the first pitch. Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. Well, a non-safe situation right here in the ninth inning. And they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away hope as the other team needs to score a bunch of runs. You get an out, you can really deflate them. Lays off the curveball. Good pitch, though. One and one. Swing and a miss on that fastball, and it's one and two. That's well just about had him, and it's a 2 2 count. You're Got him. One away. Oh, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. One out, nobody on. Here's the first pitch. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. Center fielder, number Well, he's great. He's size more in the box now. Lined out in his last at bat. Base is empty and two down. Garcia gets set and delivers. Curveball just misses. One and oh. And Sizemore swing and a miss. That evens the count up. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter. Swung late. Swung on grounder. This might be it. And on to first for out number three. And that's going to do it. But it's been a great one here today, Gary. And it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching really leading them to victory. And yeah, we're going to award the Pepsi Clutch Performer. Well, yeah, I agree. Complete games seem to be a dying art, but every now and again, someone tosses a gem like this one. What I like is that even though he wasn't perfect, his manager gave him the chance and showed enough confidence in him that he could get the job done and finish it off, and he did. 
Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. Now that time again, thanks for being with us today, Major League Baseball. For Steve Phillips, John Krug, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.